Everybody starts out as a beginner at one point. Whether it is in music, in filmmaking, in advancing the entire human race, or you, yourself, commencing astrophotography. What seems difficult at first becomes routine at a later stage. Looking back from this advanced standpoint, I'm writing this letter in video format to my past self and other people starting out in the hobby of astrophotography. To not run into the same mistakes and misconceptions that I did. So without further ado, let's start with the first topic. I'm lazy. Sometimes I just want to throw things at a wall and hope that they stick. But this surely is not a successful and deterministic method at all. Sometimes it works and you don't know why. Sometimes it doesn't work and you don't know why. So what went wrong? No clue? Write stuff down. This is such a simple tip when you hear it at first, but it actually helped me in a long way. For example, it makes it easier to finding what gear works well together, where was the perfect focus setting of each scope combination, how do you start program A, what are the settings for program B, how long was the exposure time for target C, what guiding settings did I use for combination D, you get the point. Don't fool yourself, the brain sometimes is cocky and thinks it knows everything. But its purpose in this hobby is to stay creative and to troubleshoot new problems and not to remember every little detail of a problem you encountered one month ago. So here are some examples of what I noted down myself in my trusty notebook. We have a dark databank matrix, we have a sample session with gears, with guiding details, with a matching reference frame for pics inside and some gear overview in general. Just grab yourself an old notebook and start writing down your notes in an organized manner. It makes it much easier to recall information and to track your progress. You can also use tools like OneNote if you prefer digitally, but sometimes it's easier to just write it down the old school way, especially when you're out and about with your rig in the field. Coming to my next point, and this is something you'll definitely have heard of somewhere before, but it was a thing I did not want to truly believe myself at first. Get yourself a good mount and make it the biggest portion of your budget. Yes, you've heard right, it doesn't matter how expensive and how many quadruplet or quintuplet lenses your fancy refractor has, it's all worthless when you can't aim it properly into the sky at your target. Take this into consideration. We're talking about imaging targets a few thousand light years away, extremely dim, extreme magnification required to make out any details, requiring really long exposure times while the floor is turning at a 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. And during all this, you need to point your sensor so steadily towards the patch on the sky that these distant photons need to hit the exact same 2.4 micrometer pixel again and again and again or else it will look blurry. When you know this hobby is something for you and you'll probably enjoy it a long time, get yourself a good mount right from the beginning. And now that it's difficult to know what exact equipment you need when starting out and if you actually want to spend a huge amount of money on something you're still unsure, but if you're fascinated like me in physics, space, Einstein, the vacuum decay of the universe, electronics, mechanical precision and outer space in general, the chances are high that astrophotography is a hobby you might enjoy not only a few days, but also over your whole lifetime. If that's the case, just get a good mount. I currently have three until I ended up at the one I love and enjoy the most, my CM70. I'm not saying you should start out at that price range, but maybe half of it. The mount is the most important puzzle piece in your setup and it's money well spent. At least in my perspective. The third point is actually quite similar to the one before. I bet you've looked at the tasty Celestron edge scopes or some Schmidt Cassegrains and thought about imaging those tiny galaxies when there's nothing else to shoot. But take a step back. If you remember, 
We're talking about imaging targets a few thousand light years away. Extremely dim, extreme magnification required to make out any details. Requiring really long exposure times while the floor is turning at a 50 degree per hour drift. And during all this, you need to point your sensor so steadily towards the patch in the sky that these distant photons need to hit the exact same 2.4 micrometer pixel again and again and again or else. Everything gets trickier if you increase the focal length. More weight, need bigger pixel size in the camera, guiding needs to be even more spot on, and trust me, you'll have enough problems with that anyway. Your guiding focal length won't be big enough, your mount suddenly needs to support more weight, and the list goes on and on. The good thing is, many of the deep sky targets are actually really big. And I'm talking way bigger than the moon big. Just because you don't use the biggest scope in the shed doesn't make your images less impressive. I've had so much fun so far with my trusty GT71 at 360 to 420 millimeters, and I'm thinking about going even lower with the focal length because of the practicality and ease of use. My first scope had 1200 millimeters of focal length. It was good for looking at the planets, but way too big for serious astrophotography business at the time. Don't let the focal length fever get you. At one point, I'm still wanting to go big with an SCT or something, but this should not be your starting point. A telescope for everything. Let me read you the following parts of a question I posted in a subreddit r slash telescopes some time ago. Hey guys, let's start right off the bat. Got my first Newton Skywatcher N150 scope in 2017 and now I want to upgrade. I currently have a Celestron Advanced VX EQ mount up to 15 kilograms, 60 mm aperture, guide scope with tracking and a full format camera. So I want to get deeper into astrophotography. Currently, my Newton is rather bulky and the focuser is not really precise. I want to take photos of galaxy, nebulae and possibly planets. I wish to aim for a higher aperture than my previous scope, bigger than 150mm, in order to also improve viewing with the naked eye as well as for capturing more light. In the last days, I have informed myself about APOS, Richie Kretjens, Newtons and Schmidt Cassegrains, but I am not sure what to get. I fear that RC and SC could be too tricky to collimate in comparison with a Newton laser and APO for me and also to have too big focal lengths for me to track properly. On the other hand, APOs are quite expensive for their aperture, directing me again to a Newton. But I'd want something portable as well, especially because I already own one. I would be super glad if any of you could give me some directions here because I'm totally torn between all the options. My price expectations are somewhat 800 to 1500 euros if possible. Yes, I'm from Europe. Maybe I should get an RC with a collimation tool or an APO just for portability. Thanks in advance. All right, so what kind of expectations do we have here, huh? There is a fitting word in German for what I wanted. I wanted an Eierlegende Wollmilchsau, an egg-laying wool milk pig. One thing that fits all my needs perfectly. You could say I wanted one telescope to rule them all, kind of. As the first commenter fantastically explained in his comment. I had three competing goals and I would not find what I was looking for. Visual astronomy, DSO astrophotography and planetary astrophotography are very different hobbies with very different requirements. After reading that, I had to realize that there's no perfect rig. You have to pick and choose one and roll with it. Adding my experience I could gain until now into the mix, I can certainly tell you there is no perfect all-in-one solution. For visual observing, you want an aperture as big as possible, but your tracking requirements are not as strict. A big Dobson scope would be perfect for that. For planetary imaging, you want a high focal length, an okayish mount, but most importantly, a high frame rate astro camera to capture many frames using a process called lucky imaging. The camera doesn't need to be cooled and the exposures don't need to be long as the targets are relatively bright. Guiding isn't necessary. You will capture many frames or even video snippets and stack them later. Even the last section, being DSO imaging, deep sky objects, can be divided into the two groups, small DSO and large DSO imaging. As explained in another point, DSOs can be huge, but there are smaller nebula and galaxies as well. For a DSO rig, you should go for a very sturdy rig, a small to mid-range to high focal length scope, at best a cool CMOS camera and a guide scope. Now, 
Let me phrase it as the Rolling Stones did it some time ago. You can't always get what you want. Best is, in the beginning, you go for one option, try to master that option, and if it suits you, you can expand into the different areas and possible, possibly have different rigs for each activity. Start small, go bigger over time, and be aware of the circumstances and limits each setup has. And if you are unsure about your purchase, just hop on onto the internet and ask ex experienced people. There are many forums, such as Stargazer's Lounge, multiple subreddits for gear and astrophotography, with many helpful astronomers and astrophotographers, which will give you helpful advice. Don't hesitate to get in contact. I have the feeling that many people absolutely love this hobby and are deeply fascinated by it, so of course they also love talking about it. Okay, hear me out. This next one might be really dumb and a bit embarrassing, but it actually took some time for me to properly understand the mirror alignment on a Newtonian or reflector telescope. When choosing a first telescope, many will look at Newton telescopes because of their fair price range while still maintaining a relative high focal length and f ratio compared to refractor scopes. So it definitely makes sense to start out with a reflector scope for visual observation and later for astrophotography. If you follow my footsteps and choose the path of Newtonian scopes, then make sure to get yourself an adjustment laser. Mirror alignment is a crucial aspect for having crisp optics, but it is not just required to set up the main mirror. Oh no, no. And what a fool I was. Always only adjusted the back of the tube where the main mirror is placed. This is just half of the story though. You can adjust the primary mirror as much as you want, as long as you don't adjust the secondary mirror close to the eyepiece and in doing so, you won't have a flat illumination and your picture will have weird artifacts. It took me way too long to stumble upon this point and as to why imaging with my Newtonian was such a hassle sometimes. I'm guessing not a lot of people had this problem, but once you are still in the I have no idea what I'm doing phase, you might have encountered this problem. So Chris from the past, write that one onto your notebook, align both mirrors and keep a screwdriver at hand when going to a dark spot. Nice! You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully, my past Chris Padawan, I could give you a few good points on your journey. And if, it, and if I did, I'd be happy if you gave a like for this video and consider subscribing. My name is Chris, you've been watching Chrisley's Observable Universe and have yourself a nice week and wishing you all clear skies. Chris out, see ya next time.